All right, as we uh, switch gears, uh, we, we want to also highlight a little bit on the Texas side of uh, beef production. And as we look at the beef production uh, in the United States, Texas is number one in, in uh, essentially all the categories. Uh, we've kind of switched in between one and two in the Fed side. Uh, but uh, we are, it is big in Texas. And when we think about the uh, beef cattle industry in the state of Texas, we think about cattle as kind of a historical symbol and a cultural part of, uh, of Texas. And we think about the cowboy and the Western heritage and, and what it symbolizes in Texas. But we also think about the cattle industry and just the economic impact that it has. And so it is a $9 billion uh, as far as business when we're thinking about direct value of all cattle and calves here in the United States. And if we look at just the the uh, farm to gate uh, receipts in 2014, we're looking at over $44 billion. And so it is a big part of our economy. And, and beef in Texas represents, beef production represents about 50% uh, plus of our total ag production or the ag value here in the United States. And so as we look at what impact it has on the Texas economy in general, the beef cattle industry, it's a $16 billion impact annually on the beef cattle business here in the state of Texas. So it's, again, we talked about it. it's a big part of our culture, but it's also a big, huge part of our economy as well and the impact that it has in agriculture, but then also just the economy in general there. So, all right, so if we look at Texas and where it ranks in the nation, Texas is number one in, in total cattle. Uh, is with 11.8 million and that would be total cows, calves, cattle in the feed yard but also some dairy cattle in there. Uh, over 133,000 ranches, almost 134,000 ranches. Uh, if we look at beef cows, 4.18 million beef cows here in the state of Texas or about 14 percent of the beef cows nationally are here in Texas. From the drought of 2011 to now, uh, we saw that decrease of about 1.25 million cows. So back in 2010, we were at over 5.2 million beef cows and about 20% of the, cow, the cattle, uh, or 16% of the cattle in the United States, cows, were here in the state of Texas. So we're number one there. Cattle on feed, uh, we're uh, kind of alternate, uh, first to second there, but we've got about 2.7 million head of cattle uh, on feed or about 22 percent of the cattle feeding capacity is here in the state of Texas. That's changed a little bit over time. One, we saw a decrease in our cow numbers and so we saw some decrease in the number of cattle that are going to the Texas uh, Panhandle as well as South Texas feed yards. Uh, but then we also saw some changes in uh, the corn industry and so we saw with the, the advent of ethanol production and uh, the mandates from the government side of, of having to have at least 10% ethanol in our, in our fuels. When, then we began to see uh, some value in the co-products of the ethanol producing factories. And so the corn byproducts that occur in the ethanol, uh, the dry distiller's grains, the wet distiller's grains, uh, those are a valuable commodity for feeding. And so as we get into the Midwestern states that produce a lot of corn, that have a lot of ethanol plants, there is a lot of that product available very cheap and so they can utilize that in their feed yards and utilize it uh, uh, very efficiently and get some really good cost, uh, economical cost of gain. So there's becoming uh, there's an advantage. So we've seen some shift uh, in that feeding because of those scenarios. One thing to always remember as we look at our segments, the beef industry is a forage based industry. And if we look at uh, the percentage of cattle life that's spent on forage, so if we take an animal that's in the feed yard, about 65 to 70 percent of its life is spent out on grass from the time it's born all the way to a grazing period, the stalker phase, until we get to that feed yard. And they're in the feed yard, so somewhere around an average of about 150 days uh, of their life. So about 70 percent of their life is going to be out on grass. If we look at the total tonnage of beef that's produced from, from forage, it's almost 80% of the total beef in the United States is produced uh, based off of forage. And so if you think about the calves from birth all the way uh, until they enter the feed yard, they've gone through a grazing period, a lot of them. Uh, 
we think about the gain that's on grass from that up to the feed yard, but then we also think about all of our market cows and market bulls that were spent most of their life on forage in grass, and that beef is produced from that as well. So a big portion of our tonnage is produced from a forage. So we are a forage-based industry, and uh, that's pretty evident. Whenever we do have some uh, serious droughts, it really affects our beef supply because we have to depopulate those cattle uh, because of lack of forages. And so uh, the beef industry, one thing to remember, is forage industry. And I always tell my students and the ranchers that I work with that uh, as we look at uh, the beef industry, um, we have to base it on a forage. And we call ourselves ranchers, but in really reality, we're grass farmers. We've got to think about producing a forage, whether it be a native or improved or cultivated forage. Uh, we've got to uh, think about how we produce it and supplying that, that for our cattle. And so as a cow-calf or stocker portion, we're really grass farmers. We're just taking that forage and converting it into beef there. And it's just a slide that talks about uh, we are a forage, and that's a cartoon. We don't actually put cattle on lawnmowers uh, and let them run around and, and feed themselves. But this slide also proves a point, too, that we want our cattle to graze as much as possible. And when we have to harvest it in, in the form of hay and then turn around and feed it, that becomes an inefficiency in the system. So we focus a lot on grazing and allowing those cattle to be the actual harvesters versus us uh, being a little bit funny here, throwing and, and uh, harvesting it for them and then feeding it because it just costs too much to do that. But there are times during the winter feeding period uh, that we do have to turn around and, and uh, feed those cattle some storage type forage. So as we look at the beef industry here and the layout of the beef industry, I like to think about the beef industry as an hourglass. And so we've got a lot of cow-calf producers out there that are the foundation of the beef industry. And they're producing calves that, that weigh anywhere from, from 400 to 700 pounds. And there's some extreme ranges there uh, as well. Uh, with the average somewhere around that 500 pounds at weaning or about seven months of age. So we've got the cow-calf side of the business and there's lots of those ranches scattered across the United States taking advantage of, of grass and forage growing conditions there. Uh, that's divided into two segments, the purebred and the commercial, and we'll talk about those. The commercial makes up about 95% of the cow-calf producers and the purebred's about 5%. Uh, then we go into the stalker phase, which is the grazing and growing portion. So those cattle are weaned off the ranch and then we put them out on a forage based type system. Uh, and uh, those cattle are taken and put on that system and they're going to be moved on to the next system uh, production line or segment of our industry when they get to somewhere between 600 to 900 to 1,000 pounds there. Then we go into the feed yard, the feeding side and the finishing side, and those cattle are dry lighted uh, during that time, and uh, they're going to be producing animals that range anywhere from 1,000 to this year it could have been 16, 1,700 pounds uh, at the end of their lifetime. And we'll talk about those individual segments as we move through there. Now, we don't always have to go to a grazing period, a stalker phase. Uh, we can go directly from the cow-calf at weaning directly into the feed yard, a lot of that depends on what the cost of grain is and the cost of gains. If, if grain is cheap and it doesn't ha it costs, it's pretty economical to put a pound of gain on in the feed yard, we may see more of those cattle going directly from the ranch. The other thing is it needs to rain. Uh, if there's no forage, there will be more of those calves going directly from the ranch onto it uh, as well. And so there's lots of factors. If those cattle are big coming off the ranch, if they're weaning off the cow at 800, 900 pounds, they may go directly to the feed yard. So there's some very various circumstances that will determine that. And so once we leave the feed yard, then those animals will go to the packer uh, and where they're processed. And as you'll see, that hourglass, we kind of funnel those cattle from across the United States. Uh, we put them out on grass, and then we begin to funnel them on down to the feeding industry, which is primarily concentrated in the Midwest, and there's less of those. And those feed yards can range anywhere from 1,000 to 70,000 head of cattle. And then we concentrated them on down into just a small number of packers that are processing thousands of head of cattle per day. 
Then we began to see that's the smallest portion of the hourglass and then we began to funnel that product out to the retailer, food service, and ultimately at the end of the day it spread out to the consumers across the United States as well as worldwide. One of the things we have to talk about and we think about in the beef industry is, and we're going to get into it later on in the semester, is we really have to focus on from the pasture to the plate uh, and, and thinking about uh, productions all the way through the system. And one of the things that we focus a lot on is food safety. Because if you ask the average retailer today or food service entity what their number one concern is, and we see this on the news oftentimes, of these things that occur, they're going to tell you it's food safety. They've got to make sure that they're producing a product that's safe to the consumer. That's first. And then quality of the beef would be second in line. Both of those are important, but food safety is always a high priority because it can ultimately wreck a business. And we've seen some of those examples in a lot of our different food industries where they didn't pay attention to the details and they had some food safety issues there. So at the same time, we understand that at the production side, all the way down to the ranch, the cow-calf level, that we also have to take in and, and we've got to look at uh, food safety there. And anything that we do, all the way down to this calf in this picture, uh, can influence the safety of that product on this little girl's plate uh, 17 months down the, down the line. And so we've got to look at those practices. And we have a beef quality assurance program uh, in place in the United States and in Texas it's called the Texas Beef Quality Producer Program uh, and those programs are a, a uh, voluntary program to make sure that we're doing and incorporate management practices and production practices to ensure that we're providing that safe product to the consumer so at the end of the day when we go home and serve our kids or grandkids or our family members a steak they know that it's a safe product there we also know that anything that we do all the way down at the ranch level can, and all the way at conception, back to conception, can influence the quality of that product as well. And so we think about in the beef industry of from pasture to plate. Even though we're a segmented industry and cattle may change hands a number of times before they ultimately get to the packing plants, uh, we've got to work together to produce that good quality product because at the end of the day, one bad apple can hurt the whole industry and we saw that as we go back to 2003 December 23rd when we had that first case of BSC one of the very few cases that were ever found in the United States but that first case really rocked the world uh, the beef industry world here in the United States and we saw a decrease uh, in cattle prices uh, for about a three to four week period but at the same time the consumers re quickly realized that we had the procedures in place to make sure that our food supply was safe our beef supply and so consumption jumped up so it only took one bad apple uh, at that time and so um, we've got to make sure the consumers understand that 